Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Um, let me go to biotech. Um, okay. Now, if I showed you Amlin's options, you can see here uh, May's volatility is June, July, October, Jan, and uh, Jan of uh, 12. You can see how January 11, you see how high this number is? If I spin it this way, the January volatility is way higher than the other months. And that's because uh, I think they have some uh, drug trial coming up in October. Let me check the news. Yeah, so they have a drug trial coming up October 22nd. So all this time, nothing is pretty much going to happen. And this is when the event is going to take place. So you can see how this volatility is far greater than the other months. Normally, uh, when I was trading, I didn't even have this part right here, so I would have no idea. So the only way I would know is I would actually have to scan this whole option montage and compare one month to the other. And then I would find out, like in January, how the, at the monies, you see how there's like 83 and 84 versus October, it's only 60s. And that's how you would know as an experienced trader, like there's something that's going to happen in January. But unless you actually paid attention and knew what you were looking for, it's very difficult to get. And uh, my idea was, hey, let's make it a lot simpler. So just by putting it on top, you can see right away that like this volatility in January is way higher than the other. And you know this is a biotech, so something must be happening here. So you can see right here the skew is much higher. So if you were thinking like, hey, the skew is high here. I don't think anything's going to happen. Even though the skew is high in January, you can maybe do some kind of time spread. And if it stays quiet for a couple of months, you can uh, gather the premium, and then you can use it to uh, accumulate these options right here. Another, so these would be for event stocks. You'll have something that's like, uh, it, you'll have like a bump in the skew where one line stands out above the rest. Um, let's go to like a regular stock. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. Let's go to Goldman. And they're in the news a lot lately. So you see how the skew is to the downside, right? You can tell right away, like, hey, look, the puts, the outer money puts are way higher than the outer money calls. If I look at the options, let's look at the June options. Uh, the stock's trading about 37 and a half. And if you take the seven and a half strike, this is trading 765 at 790 while the 45s are trading 710 at 725. So the puts are trading higher than the calls. Uh, for most stocks, for regular stocks, this will be the case since the chance of a stock going down is, you know, it's uh, rapidly, it's far greater than a stock going up rapidly. So uh, the, for most stocks, the downside skew is always there. So in in, in trading, there is a skew of each month, but there's also a skew between months. So let me actually play back uh, three months of Goldman Sachs. And then here you can see it again loading up. And then you can see how the skew is moving over time. Now you see how, how tight these lines are all together? For before this happened. So three months, let me go to the chart tab. So I'm, I'm looking at these three months. 
right here. Right, so out of the year, it's like this part right here. If you look at it, and let me pull this back to that date, you can see how the volatility is in the pretty low, uh, basically like in the 29 range. And you can see how the, the volatility between the months are pretty tight. So there's not that much difference between the two different months. All right, so let me move it forward. So everything is going according to plan. It's a pretty big company. Everyone knows how well they do, so they're very predictable. Uh, but in, on, in April, when they got that letter of, um, that they did some improprietary uh, inside of trading basically by giving the customers um, basically bad portfolio, you can see how, how this, these lines that were very tight separated. You see how tight these lines are? So the skew also is not only which way it's leaning, but it's also between one month and another. Right? So like these were usually only one to one and a half vault points difference between the different months. So this is May, this is July, this is October, and this is uh, January. And you can see how how they're very tight throughout the course of a time period. You can see pretty much they're relatively very easy to see how uh, correlated they are. And then when they did get an announcement, it had the separation. So let's say they got this news out, and in your opinion, um, that nothing really was going to happen at that moment and for the for the week uh, for the next week that that Goldman wasn't going to get another letter or something other bad news popping out uh, what you would do is you would you would see like this this separation of these two months you would say hey these this is not the normal spread between uh, Goldman right so so if you look at the July 65 calls, if you can look at the little box down there, it's 38 volatility, and the option price is 1025 at 1075. And if you look at the May 65 call, it's 44 volatility, and it's $7 at 720. So 44 volatility, $7 at 720, and the other one is 38 volatility, and 1025 at 1075 and you know let's just say like hey you thought this was going to come together in the next few days so you sold this call and you bought this call All right so the next few days uh, basically uh, it goes down And you hedged it delta neutral. And you can see right here, this turns into 35 vol. And this one turns into 34 vol. So if you were thinking that it was going to come together, and the stock is lower, so you would have hedged it uh, like delta neutral, uh, you would have you, you would have been able to maybe gain some um, profit from those lines coming together. Now, the thing that you have to understand about, um, about this is like, as it gets to expiration, it's gonna, it's gonna go really high, and these aren't something that you can probably trade against. So uh, with time spreads, I would be really careful of doing them because it takes a lot of other things. You can actually sell the back month and it can go lower as well. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.